Welcome to the Welsh capital city of Cardiff for the 2016 IAAF World Half Marathon Championships, one of Europe's fastest growing cities. Today placed hosts to some of the very best runners in the world. As the spring marathon season is about to take hold, this historic race is the ideal platform for those preparing for 26.2 miles and it offers those at the front a brilliant opportunity to take a prestigious global title over 13.1 miles and those who do win will join an illustrious list of former winners some of the sports greats have come and conquered one or two editions of the world half marathon championships well we have been predicted huge rain and wind so far so good although it is a little bit overcast as you can see there but a brilliantly supported event there are already thousands lining the streets of cardiff the castle just one of a whole myriad of great pieces of architecture culture and history that the runners further back in the field will certainly enjoy as the race gets underway We've got an incredible elite men's race to come. That starts in around about half an hour's time. But first, it's the elite women. Some brilliant athletes have won this race. Lorna Kiplegat has the women's only world record. That was one of her three titles here. Paula Radcliffe has done three, so too Tegla Larupe. And Cynthia Limo, the fastest time in the world this year. I was there in Ras Al Khaimah last month. That was a sensational performance. She is the standout figure of five brilliant Kenyans who will hope to take glory here on the streets of Cardiff. So we have 86 athletes from 35 countries. One athlete coming from Denmark at the bottom of the page. The Ethiopians have a very interesting team, one or two very inexperienced, but two really classy contenders. Netsanet Kudeta and Ganet Yalu will be the standout names for them. And the five that everyone will be watching is uh, this brilliant quintet from Kenya. Absolutely sensational, all of them, and surely the winner will come from their team. And the Americans have a pretty decent squad as well. Many of their contenders took part in their Olympic marathon trials in scorching hot weather in Los Angeles. That was only seven weeks ago. What a backdrop. And what an occasion this is for a very proud sporting nation and some of the very best athletes in the world are here to do battle over 13.1 miles. There's been a lot of excitement here in Cardiff, well ever since it was announced that they would be hosts of this event, Copenhagen was the last edition, real passion here. And great hopes and expectation of a brilliant race. So, Mary Watkira and Googie got the silver two years ago. Can she go one better? Miho Miho Shimuzi. Probably the most experienced of the Japanese team, 23rd in the World Cross Country Championships recently. Cynthia Limo, I think she could on paper be the favourite for this one. That 66.04 in rack was absolutely sensational. One of the talented Italians, Anna Incerti, sixth in the European Championship Marathon last year. She picked up the gold after a couple of reallocated placings in 2010. And one of the two world-class Ethiopians in this race, Kanet Yalu. She broke the national record, finishing third in Ras Al Khaimah. She was 10th two years ago, but she's a brilliant cross-country runner. Can she get in amongst the mix for the medals? Here we go. Well, if you're a fan of distance running, you should be really looking forward to this race. Great pride on the line amongst the incredible quintet from Kenya. Two Ethiopians who will very much hope to get in the mix for the medals. 
interesting to see how things pan out over this really interesting course. A lot of landmarks. We've got 16,000 club runners and fun runners who will be uh, taking part. The slogan for the masses is run in the footsteps of champions, and they certainly will be doing that as the morning unfolds. So how early will the Kenyans choose to push the pace? The quality of women's half marathon running over the years has, has grown immeasurably. We now have so many athletes running inside 70 minutes. You bear in mind the late Greta Waits was the first woman in the world to run under 70 minutes. That was 1982. This year alone, 33 women have gone under that barrier. So, plenty to play for here. So Cynthia Limo, quite happy just to sit on the front left. Pascalia Kip Koech on the right-hand side. We haven't spoken a great deal about her. Picked up a bronze four years ago in Kavana. That was an absolutely baking edition of the World Half Marathon Championships. This is the 22nd edition in total. So very different conditions to those which led Kip Koech to the bronze medal four years ago. It was fairly cool in Copenhagen two years ago. Team prizes hotly contested as well, and as you can imagine, the Kenyans dominate that. Nine team titles for the Kenyans. So this is an overview of the whole course. They'll be heading out towards the Penarth Marina here and over the barrage, which could be quite windy, across the Cardiff Bay and the docks. And then they'll be heading out towards the Roth Park area, 130 acres, including a 30-acre lake, ornate gardens, heading back past the civic buildings and then in towards the finish. And I wonder whether it would come down to a sprint. History tells you in this women's championship that the winning margins are quite tight. Gladys Chirono, who opted not to compete here because she's contesting her first marathon later on this spring. She won last year by 15 seconds. Messeret Hailu in 2012 won by just a single second. So it could come down to something very, very tasty towards the finish. There's Kip Koech, just on the right of frame. But Cynthia Limo was absolutely amazing when she became on official standings, the third fastest woman in history. Second in Houston at the beginning of the year. That run in Ras Al Khaimah was a real step up in class. Those of you who follow distance running may often refer to Mary Ngugi as Mary Wakira. Same athlete, sometimes they choose to take the middle name as opposed to the surname. But Wakira and Googi, whatever you want to call her, she's the silver medalist from two years ago. She set an American all-comers record when she won Houston in 66 and a half. So real quality. And look at that. All five Kenyans in the race are at the front of the field. Then we almost have the Japanese in a straight line. Great team performance by the Japanese in recent years. They've won the bronze medal, as far as the women's team race is concerned, in each of the last eight editions. Really strict qualification terms for the Japanese athletes who've been hoping to make this team. Uh, Kip Koech just deciding to stretch her legs a little bit. Lovely flowing stride, sort of mid to front foot strike and just makes it look so easy. Cardiff City Stadium in the distance, one of the biggest football clubs in Wales. They play in the second tier of the English League, nicknamed the Bluebirds. So, some great sporting history here, not just 
with rugby. Plenty of football as well. And Wales have qualified for the European Football Championships in 19, from 1958, the first time in a long time. So there'll be plenty of Welsh football fans heading over to France later this year and hopefully one or two supporting and cheering these athletes out on the course. Kipkoetch was just stretching her legs off the front and now Limo running alongside her. Pascalia Kipkoetch. Cynthia Limo leading the pace at the moment. So you can see already there have been one or two casualties of this pace. 103 is Billy Clark, the Australian. Already we have quite a sizable chase group, so we'll keep our eye on the time splits here. Certainly as far as the men's race is concerned, they were talking about world records. Well, Jeffrey Camwell was, but uh, the conditions may not be conducive to lightning quick times, but they're not hanging around, and that is why some of the world's best half marathon runners have already become detached from this lead group. So Cardiff City have moved to a new ground. Those of you familiar with Welsh football will remember Ninian Park. They're just running past the site of the old stadium, but no time for them to contemplate a Welsh sporting tour. Really interesting that all five of the Kenyans are at the front. You can see the Japanese athletes tightly packed. I wasn't sure how quickly this would spread out, but there's the answer. Alison Dixon of Great Britain, just towards the back of that lead group. But this is a display that we were expecting to see, really. All five of the Kenyan women are truly world-class. And once again, Kip Koech just putting a couple of metres between herself and the rest of the field. Ungugi, or Wakera, as many of you will know her, just quite happy to sit on the shoulder of Cynthia Limo. So we have three distinct groups forming. Pack of five just to the left of picture there. Then the second group of around about 10 athletes. But at the front, it's the Kenyans, the Ethiopians and the Japanese who are setting the early pace here on the streets of Cardiff. Fascinating rivalries emerging here. Yuka Ando runs with that really distinctive low arm lift. 22nd in the World Junior Cross a couple of years ago. She's gone inside 70 minutes in the last uh, 12 months. And I noticed doing some homework for this that the Japanese have deliberately picked a very, very young team here. They only have one athlete over the age of 22. And I wonder whether that's indicative of the fact that they're already planning for the, some of these youngsters to have the best chance to impress in Tokyo in four years' time. So 103, Millie Clark, running alongside some of the Chinese athletes. This is the third of the groups. Clark's got a PB of 73 minutes, which is uh, certainly not, a not an unrespectable time. Alison Dixon running towards the central line. There she is on the left of frame. She's the leading Britain at the moment and will get plenty of support. Been around a while, had a good gutsy win in the Brighton Marathon a few years ago. 18th in the world half two years ago. That was a good performance in uh, Copenhagen. Was leading the Commonwealth Marathon, the athlete who was representing England on that occasion and had to drop out after 15K. So, British representation at the moment, but this is being totally dominated at this point by the five Kenyan women. They've won six of the available 21 titles so far, or if you include Lorna Kiplikat, who technically won the titles for Holland, but was born and raised in Kenya, then they have almost half of the 21 titles contested so far. 
watching out for Gemsu. She's uh, leading the uh, chasers for the Ethiopians, but there's the lineup for the Kenyan quintet. Wow. They would walk into any international squad and happen to be five of them. Well, they've decided they're not interested in the Ethiopians setting the pace. And there's an interesting mix with the Ethiopian squad because three of them are relatively inexperienced. It's Netsanet Gudeta, who's tucked in in the pack. There she is, just towards the right of frame there. And Ganet Yalu, they are the two best Ethiopian athletes. Demsu is running well. She's in the centre of your frame there. Memories of Meseret Hailu, who smashed her lifetime best and on a global scale, came out of nowhere to win the title for the Ethiopians in Kavana four years ago. So it's, uh, it's not impossible that one of the unfancied Ethiopians does something special here today. We've seen it before. But really, the favourites are the five Kenyans who are leading the pace. So around about, what, 20 to 25 in that lead group. But a very, very long way to go here in this elite women's race. And if you're interested in the elite men's race, we have around, what, 20, 25 minutes still left to go. What a duel that's going to be between Jeffrey Kamwaraw, the defending champion, and Mo Farah, the reigning Olympic champion over 10,000 metres. Ando on the left of frame for Japan. It's pretty solid here, but there are a lot of athletes still in the hunt and still in contention. So the Kenyans are running within themselves here, but they're quite sensibly deciding to run at the front and stay out of trouble. Kellen Taylor of the United States, she's just got a couple of meters between her and the next athlete in that uh, lead group, Yovana de la Cruz of Peru trying to hang on there. As I said, the Americans have a, a good team. Taylor was sixth in the trials marathon. There she is, 188. She's got a PB over the full marathon of 228. Got a bronze in the Pan American Championships last year, over 5,000 metres. So the talented American just struggling to live with the pace. But there are the five Kenyans with good data running alongside them there. Yalu is also there. There is the group. So plenty still in touch here, but the Kenyans are, you, su you suspect here, just watching and waiting as the gap grows a little bit to Kellen Taylor, the 29 year old. And just to give you an indication as to the class here, Taylor's PB over the half marathon is 71.05. So she's already become a little bit detached from this group. And it will be interesting when they head out towards the Cardiff Barrage, which is the piece of land that was built to connect the marina with Cardiff Bay. It's supposed to be very, very windy out there. So that will make things interesting. So, Taylor's off the back of the group. De La Cruz, the Peruvian, is also becoming detached. But as far as the Ethiopians and the Kenyans are concerned, this is all very comfortable at the moment. Not too far away from the five kilometer checkpoint. That'll give us an indication as to roughly what pace they're going. But really, unless something remarkable happens, this is a race and this is a day where the times are largely irrelevant. This is about winning, this is about joining the likes of Tegla Larupe, the Kenyan who's won this three times. It's about joining Paula Radcliffe, the reigning marathon world record holder who won this title three times and picked up a couple of world cross country titles as well. And as far as the Kenyans are concerned, the battle to be number one in the country 
is almost exactly the same as the battle to be number one in the world. Mary Wakera and Googie. Great win in Houston. And they're talking. Perez Chep Church here as we look at the back of the group. And they are beginning to splinter a little bit. Perez Chep Church here, who was fourth in Ras Al Khaimah earlier this year, was talking to Mary Wakera. Very interesting. I wonder whether there are some team tactics going on. They were certainly communicating, probably in Swahili, which means the Ethiopians around them wouldn't be able to understand what they were saying to one another. Just gone past the three-mile point. So it's around about 70-minute pace at the moment. We'll get the split at 5K, but they went through three miles in just outside or bang on 16 minutes. So... It's pretty steady as far as the leading quintet from Kenya are concerned. They'll be running within themselves at this pace, whereas you can see, obviously, by the fact that the field has spread out, that uh, some of these athletes back towards the middle of the pace will already be struggling. So, 16.31. Yeah, it's around about 70 minutes. This is cruise control for these five women. So... Chep Church here. And Kip Tulagedai. Right there. Five Kenyans, five Ethiopians, and we now have a group of three Japanese. And Gladys Tejeda of Peru is hanging on to that group as well. And they are now beginning to drop the rest of the field. Now we're getting in towards the meat of the early race here. So, Eloise Wellings on the left of picture is trying to close the gap. She's in really good form, the uh, Australian. Meanwhile, this is the full split. All five Kenyans, all of the Ethiopians, the Japanese. And also Tejeda of Peru right up there. Eloise Wellings has indeed closed that gap. Really good to see the Australian in the mix in this lead group. 69-29 earlier this year in a lifetime best. So we know the Australian on the far side there is in really good shape at the moment. So, Wellings has become attached to this lead group. Just checks her stride. So they were on course for around about 70 minutes or so. Wellings is capable of running at that pace. And just to give you an indication here as to how difficult it is for the non-East Africans to win a medal in this event, the last non-African-born medalist, as we look further down the field and see one or two of the Americans just beginning to struggle a little bit, Sarah Hall, 32 years of age, she's married to Ryan Hall, the 204 plus change men's marathon runner who's sadly had to retire recently. And Sarah Hall's best time, just outside 70 minutes, so quite sensibly she's running at her own pace. That's the team competition. Obviously, there's nothing to choose between the Kenyans and the Ethiopians at the moment because they have three running side by side, but I'm sure one or two will begin to drop off. But the last non-African born medalist in this championship was Constantina Domescu Dita, who got a silver 10 years ago. That is how difficult it is for the Americans, the Australians and the Europeans to get in amongst the dominance of the East African-born athletes. But good to see Eloise Wellings right up there in that lead group at the moment. A good pace, actually, for the early stages. 15 minutes to the start of the men's race. Once the two are underway, we will be rocking and rolling between the two encounters, trying to follow all the twists and turns of drama. And what a race the men's championship promises to be. 
Penarth Marina there and uh, it won't be too long before they're running over the barrage where I checked online this morning there were some fairly stiff winds predicted. It's quite an exposed part of the course and the athletes who are tucked in in the middle of the pack may save a little bit of time and a little bit of energy. You can just see the barrage on the top left-hand side. That's where the athletes will snake their way around Heading towards Penarth Marina. It's the most sheltered section of Cardiff Bay. And when they're on the barrage, they will feel the full force of the Welsh weather and conditions. Now, the three Japanese athletes have begun to get detached here. Tejada, who was running really well for Peru, 171. She's now at the very front of your picture there. So she's become detached. 154 and 153. Matsuda and Shimizu, who we introduced to you at the start of the output. She's also beginning to struggle. So it's Yuka Ando, who is just, just trying to hang on to the back of that group. Sinka Desi of Ethiopia is now at the back of that group. There's Tejeda, 171. And 154 is Shimizu, who was 23rd in the World Cross last year. Decent athlete. She's a sub-70 minute performer, so it might be quite sensible, actually, that she's decided just to drop off the back here, just to ensure that she can come through strongly in the closing stages. So this is going to come down to a really proud rich rivalry between the Ethiopians and the Kenyans. There they are, just moving up towards the right-hand side of Panath Marina. Perfect location for those who enjoy sailing. It is the most sheltered area of Cardiff Bay. And we have a wedding taking place today in between the two races. So hopefully if, if the bride and groom say I do quickly enough, they can come back out and see some world-class racing. Maybe they'll be done with the vows in time to see Kamwaraw and Mo Farah tearing chunks out of each other as they head towards the barrage. That battle's still to come. There is a first glimpse of the barrage. As I said, this will become interesting because it's uh, among the most exposed parts of the course, 1.1 kilometres that joins the half key to Cardiff Bay but all three of the Japanese athletes have become detached so we have five Kenyans and four Ethiopians and this rivalry separated by the vast stunning Rift Valley is once again providing us with a great test and a great distance running confrontation One five three Matsuda. She was fourth in the Yamaguchi test event. Good runner. She's only 20 years of age, so this is great experience by the Japanese. And we do occasionally see some nations choosing not to send representation here, but look at this from Matsuda. Well, the 20-year-old has got the bit between her teeth because she has decided to bridge the gap so we now have 10 athletes in this lead group, five Kenyans, four Ethiopians, and the 20-year-old Matsuda, who has decided that she wants to make sure that she doesn't let the East Africans have it all their own way. It was quite a sudden injection of pace by the young Japanese athlete. I hope she doesn't pay for that towards the end, but great to see a brave run, that she's not afraid to take it to the East African nations. And maybe that's part of the problem with their dominance. It's, it's the intimidation factor. People start believing they can't beat East Africans. But a great run from Matsuda as they do now head out onto the barrage. Ten minutes until the start of the men's race. I know there'll be so much interest and intrigue across East Africa. Jeffrey Camerall would love to reverse that 1-2 with Mo Farah from the Beijing World Championships. 10,000 metres last year, won by the Briton. Cameron did his best 
to, uh, to cause the Olympic champion problems. Farah was up to the task once more. Will he be here over 13.1 miles? Well, the start of that battle just under 10 minutes away. Well, Matsuda was trying to close that gap, but she's just allowed a little bit of distance to open up once more. Well, the barrage that they're running over at the moment was key to the regeneration of this area. Stunning views of the Bristol Channel and the River Taff. But uh, that's the view from the perspective of Yuka Ando. She has the Peruvian Giovanna de la Cruz up ahead of her. And then Matsuda, who is just behind that lead group. Great run by the Peruvian, by the way. She hasn't completely faded here. Pan American Cup win at the cross country earlier this year. Really good runner. 21st in the World Championships and uh, 21st at the World Half Marathon back in 2010. Nan Ning, I was there in China for that edition of the World Half Marathon Championships and it was absolutely sweltering. So we've had a real mix of conditions in previous editions of the World Half. But that's an excellent run from Tejeda. There's the chase pack just towards the right of frame. So you've got the leaders on the left-hand side Matsu of Japan, who's working really hard to try and close the gap. Then Yuka Ando behind her, Tejeda of Peru, and then a group of about five or six. There is Matsuda, just towards the left-hand side, but this is the lead nine. And there'll be some interested spectators all across the bars in Nairobi and up at the higher altitude training camps around Eldoret and D10. Caps a gap. So much pride here on the line. And also, of course, the not inconsiderable factor of trying to impress the Kenyan selectors ahead of a, an attack on a place for the Olympic team for Rio. Or maybe one or two will drop back down to the 10,000 metres on the track. The strength and depth in these two nations is absolutely phenomenal. All nine of these women would be Olympians if they represented any other nation. And of course, only three can be in any team. So, that's a little move to the front from Gannett Yalu. And the men are prowling and poised, ready for their eagerly anticipated race. What a confrontation this is going to be between Jeffrey Kamwaraw, Beaton Kuroki and Mo Farah. This will be uh, the Olympic champion's first outing in this particular championship, although he has put together some pretty decent half marathon performances over the years. Two runs last year for the Briton, both of them comfortably inside 60 minutes. So Kamwaraw, you might suspect, starts as the marginal favourite. But... Uh, Plenty, plenty of intrigue. There is Mo Farah just towards the back of shot, loping along with that long sleeved white top and the beanie. He looks fairly relaxed, trains with the Americans. So, Farah and Co will start in just a few minutes' time. And this is interesting. And where we've had the Kenyans leading all the way from the front. We now have Gudetta and Yalu and Desi deciding that they will make their place and make their presence felt at the front. Gudetta sort of leans forward on the right-hand side. Yalu is a really high-quality performer. Yalu, 66-29, when she finished third behind Cynthia Limo and Gladys Chirono in the Rack Half Marathon. So we know that Gannett Yalu has great, great pace and acceleration. One of the Ethiopians, I think, has been dropped. I think it's one of the lesser fancied Alam Yehu. So we've got a group of around six, I think. 
five Kenyans. There they are, just in the bottom right-hand frame. We have the five Kenyans and now three Ethiopians. So we are down to eight. And a change of tactic. The five Kenyans were at the front, but they have decided to let the Ethiopians set the pace. This is cat and mouse here as we edge towards the halfway stage. 1-2-9, gets a net Gudetta loping forward over half an hour on the clock. And we'll get a split at somewhere close to the 10K marker. Really interesting race unfolding here. And a really, really intriguing race is about to get underway in the shadow of the castle. This is a, a really definitive piece of acceleration here from Gudetta. She looks over her shoulder, 31 and a half on the clock. Clearly feeling good. Sixth place in the world half two years ago. She's a world championship bronze medalist. It's confirmation one of the Ethiopians just getting dropped off that pace. So, coming up to some fabulous buildings here. The Senate and Pierhead building, Roald Dahl Place and the Millennium Centre. And look at the support here in this centre of tourism. In the background there, they call that the Baby Big Ben or the Welsh Big Ben. Just watching to see whether any of this Elite Eight go for a drink, and indeed they do. Really important to keep the hydration going, even though you can see a couple of spots of rain there. It is quite cool, and we've yet to see the huge rainfall that was predicted before the race began this morning. So, whilst the women are at the 10k marker or thereabouts, the men are preparing to do battle, and what a race this will be. Great athletes waiting to take part here. Ethiopia, what a team they have assembled. And Great Britain, headed by Mo Farah. Can the likes of Jeffrey Kamwaror stop Mo Farah producing a golden moment here on British soil? Eighty-eight athletes in total, representing 41 countries. And just as is the case with the women's team. The Americans have uh, a really decent squad here. Jared Ward qualified to represent them for the marathon. He's arguably the best of their athletes assembled at the start. So, 15 seconds, we're going to introduce you five feet now. So, Guye Adola got a bronze in so Copenhagen two years ago. He won the Ethiopian trial for this race, 59.06, his best time. Jeffrey Kamwaror, the defending champion. Silver medalist over 10,000 metres behind Mo Farah. He's spoken of a world record here. Well, that may not be possible, but a great performance will be. And listen to the reception for the Olympic champion, world champion and European champion from Great Britain. His debut in the World Half Marathon Championships. He must feel good, otherwise he wouldn't be here. Bidan Kuroki, brilliant athlete, silver in the World Cross last year. He's in lightning quick form and is unbeaten over the half marathon. Ngusi Amsalom, I saw him produce a great sprint finish to come third at Ras Al Khaimah earlier this year, fifth in Copenhagen two years ago. And the PA announcer really trying to get the crowd fired up, but there's no need. They know how high quality this race is going to be. Oh, and there's a faller right at the beginning. It's one or two of the Kenyans and the Ethiopians. A real disaster there. I'm looking for faces. Farah is up. Now, I wonder, I just wonder whether it's possible that that was Jeffrey Kamwaror. Whoever it was was wearing a cap. 
We will try and pick up who fell. They were limping. One of the Ethiopians picked up the Kenyan, but there were a lot of athletes that had come past them. Right, Muchira is there, Kipiego is there. No Farah is there, so too Tola. I can't see Jeffrey Camerall at this moment. So Machiri, you may be aware he competes under the name Kuroki. He's one of the favourites for this race. He's on his feet. We are looking for Jeffrey Camerall. Well, dramatic moments in the early stages here of this World Half Marathon Championships. I've got a feeling it is possible that's Jeffrey Camerall because he was wearing a cap before the race. And if it is, Camerall went down on both knees and that could be a real, real disaster for him. Of course, if he's OK, he'll then have to streak his way through the field to catch up. Wow. Well, you don't often see drama like that on the start line of a half marathon. So... Abeni Aleu, he's a 206 marathon runner. He's decided to set the pace. And I can now see, as we focus on Ayelu, he is a good athlete. I can see Jeffrey Camerall. There are five Kenyans in that group. And if it was Jeffrey Camerall, he's back on his feet and he's taken the cap off. So, Jeffrey Camerall, for those of you with eagle eyes, you're looking for number 559. Five, He's got white trainers on as well, and I am 99% sure that it was Camerall who fell. Wow. There he is. He's in fourth place. He's in fourth place there. We're now looking at the back of the league group. Well, I'm still catching my breath. He went down on both knees, but he is back up and running. And he is in that group. There he is. You can just see him behind Ayelu, who is looking at his shoulder. There is Camerall. Now, I'm looking down to see if there's any grazing on his knees, but you can't tell from this angle. So, Jeffrey Camerall. Wow, he's back on his feet. There he is. He's wearing 5.59 in fourth place. One of the Ethiopians went down as well. So, if you're just joining us, third from the right-hand side there on that left-hand group, there was the slip from Camerall, both knees on the ground, and one of the Ethiopians went down behind him, but in a great spirit of fair play and friendship, the other Ethiopian stopped and picked Jeffrey Camerall up. Wow. So, I guess we'll find out over the coming miles whether Jeffrey Camerall has an ongoing problem as a result of that fall. He certainly worked his way back up to the group quite quickly. Anyway, if we were expecting this race to be dramatic, we certainly got confirmation of that. Wow. So there's the lineup for the five world-class Kenyans in this race. Camerall, let's remind ourselves, is the defending champion. He's also the reigning world cross-country champion. He just beat Beaton Kuroki, who here today has the name Muchiri on his vest. It is Beaton Kuroki. He just got the silver behind Camerall in a brilliant world cross in China around about 12 months ago. But one of the Ethiopians, and I suspect it was the Ethiopian who fell behind Jeffrey Camerall, has not managed to get back up into this lead group. So we would have been expecting to have the five Kenyans, the five Ethiopians, and Mo Farah in the group. But, just looking to see, I think there are still only four Ethiopians in that lead group. There's Aleu. He leads with Edwin Kiptu in second place. Really good athlete, Edwin Kiptu. Tactical awareness. Farah is in that lead group. Just can't see him. There he is. He's got that distinctive beanie on. 5 3 1 is Tamirat Toller. He's got that long loping stride. 
ran just a couple of seconds outside 60 minutes last year, the Ethiopian. But what an occasion and what a buzz there was around this city when it emerged that Mo Farah was competing here. A rerun of a fantastic 10,000 metre race in Beijing last year, which Farah won. Camera all pushed him close, but he left it late. Will the Kenyan be feeling well enough after that fall? And will he be feeling brave enough to take this race to the Olympic 10,000 metre champion before we get too close towards the end? Lots of questions, lots of intrigue. Ayelu is leading at the moment. Just veering off to his left-hand side. Kip two follows. Kip Yego is there, so too Kamwaraw and Muchiri. Weaving left and right. You do see that occasionally, but not too often. He's obviously decided he doesn't want any company there, but he's using up valuable energy that he could do with towards the end of the race. There's a global title at stake here. So, Ayelu, sixth in Dubai with 206. Once again, look at the Ethiopian veering over to the left-hand side of the road. Then heading back towards the centre. The Olympic champion, Mo Farah, is in the centre of that group. And after dramatic early moments, all five Kenyans are in the race at the front. How great is this? A World Half Marathon Championships. And for these athletes, they are doing what the slogan that encouraged them to sign up indicated. They are running in the footsteps of champions. Right, the men's race is in the early stages. The 16,000 club runners and fun runners are just beginning to pull their way onto the streets. But we are now back with the elite women. Perez Church here is there. Mary Wakira running with the name of Googie on her best. She's there. So too Cynthia Limo. <laughs> Kip Tagulai is also in that group. So it's Gudetta and Yalu. They were the two Ethiopians that we fancied might be able to get in the mix here. So only one of the Kenyans has been dropped. I think that's... Pascalia Kipkoet, she's just on the left of frame there. You can see the gap back to the fifth Kenyan. So, there she is. She was leading in the early stages. But where we had five Kenyans and two Ethiopians, we now have four Kenyans. This is world class. They're on Richmond Road not too far away from the 15k marker and in a little while they'll begin heading up towards Roth Park and that 30 acre lake with the memorial to Captain Scott but look at this Mo Farah has moved into third place this is Beden Kuroki he's running with Machiri on his vest and Edwin Kiptu first and second Farah in third and Jeffrey Kamwaraw is right behind him in fourth place. Well, these guys mean business. Now, you don't often see athletes going to the front this early. So two miles, that was what? Nine minutes plus change. This is quick. My goodness me. This is fast. They are going through in 60 minute pace here. That is good work for the very early stages. This is a positive piece of front running by the two Kenyans. And Mo Farah now knows he is in a race proper. Kamwaraw's in third. He's got those distinctive all-white trainers. Mo Farah just behind him. And I think it's Stephen Makoka, one of the very, very experienced South Africans, who's uh, in that lead group alongside Mo Farah. And one or two of the Ethiopians beginning to struggle with that pace. So, Kiptu and Machiri pushing it on here. And I wonder whether there are some team tactics at play here. There was a lot of discussion over the last couple of days as to whether the Kenyans would be prepared to sacrifice one or two of their own individual race aspirations to do something very special.
to help the likes of Jeffrey Cameron. But the argument against that is that all five Kenyans in this race, including, of course, Machiri, are world class in their own right. Machiri is a silver medalist in the World Cross Country Championships. Edwin Kiptu is a 59 26 man at his best. But whether they're running for each other or themselves, they are not hanging around. That's Jeffrey Camelraw on the right of frame. There's Mo Farah, and then comes Tamirat Toller. And Goosey Absalom is in contention there, the very classy Eritrean. If you've just joined us, just a reminder that Camelraw running there with the yellow and the white trainers, he fell on the start line. He's the defending champion. He's the reigning world cross country champion. He got himself back to the front very, very quickly. But it's the man he did battle with for the gold medal over the World Cross Country in China on this very weekend last year, who's leading at the moment. Eden Kuroki Muchiri. Wow, what a race this is turning out to be. Right, let's get the split time as they head towards the 15-kilometre point. We know that one of the Kenyans has been dropped. She's now out of sight. That was Pascalia Kipkoic, who ended up on the podium four years ago. So nine miles in, what, 46-plus change? This is quick. This is good. Now, if I've done my calculations correctly, 46 and a half at nine miles is what? Well, it's around about just inside 68-minute pace. This is excellent running. Look at Chep Church here. She just glanced over and exchanged a few words with Cynthia Limo. Good running here. They've increased the pace. They've wound it up gradually. And as far as the Ethiopian challenge is concerned, Gudetta and Yalu, the two classy athletes from the quintet, are still right in the mix. Only two Ethiopian women have ever won this title, Bahane Adere back in 2002, and Meseret Hailu won by just a single second, 10 years later, in the baking heat of Kavana. So, Jep Church here, second fastest athlete in the world last year, Perez Jep Church here, over 10K. She's run inside 31 minutes, so she's got great speed and endurance. But Cynthia Limo, just looking round there, I think she's moving over to try and get herself a drink. We're edging towards the 15k mark. There we are. So 48 plus change. So let's just have a look. 48 plus change. This is a roundabout low 68s. This is excellent running from the lead women. Four Kenyans, two Ethiopians. As we once again return our attention to the elite men. Dramatic moments right at the start of the race when the defending champion fell. So we had Beden Kuroki Machiri who was leading. But there's Edwin Kiptu. They're on Panath Road here, coming up to the 5k marker. And still Kamwaraw in that group. So too Mo Farah. What a great duel this could turn out to be. But of course, they're not the only two world class athletes in this field. This really is an absolutely stellar lineup. 14 15 at 5k. Yes, and it's still just a few sec sec seconds here or there, around about 60 minutes. This is a great platform for these athletes to lay down in the early stages. They're running really well here, considering it's relatively cool. Farah, one of the only athletes to get himself a drink in the early stages as Abane Ayalu moves across to his left-hand side there. Is he going for a drink or is he taking the tightest line? Yes, he does go for a drink. Grabbing one of the Americans' water bottles there, actually. Obviously missed his own. Wow. Eden Kuroki is leading. Jeffrey Kamalraw is in second place. Can the World Championship silver medalist on the track defend his title. If he does, it'll be an amazing achievement considering he was on his knees five metres beyond the start line. 
leg speed of Machiri just gives you an idea here that they are not hanging around. So, Camaro, big, powerful athlete, he's in second place. Mo Farah, buried in the pack at the moment. So, all the main contenders were right there at 14.10. So it's around about 60 minute pace at the moment and you can tell by the camera from the helicopter, the rain has started to fall. Ayed Lamdesam, he's had a couple of reasonable runs in the world half in recent years. The expatriated Moroccan now representing Spain. So confirmation of the leading six in the women's race, we have four Kenyans and two Ethiopians. Can Cynthia Levo, the fastest woman in the world this year, add the global title to her collection that she so desperately wants? Could run from Lani Marchant, really good athlete from Canada, 228 marathon runner. And Alison Dixon, the uh, Brighton marathon winner from Great Britain, 37 years of age, I think, still running pretty well. So, 10 miles in the women's race. So they were running around about 68-minute pace. So 51.45. This is quick. They may well go inside 68 minutes here. And that's why another Kenyan has been dropped. So, six have become five. It's still looking very good indeed as far as the team competition is concerned. So, Mary Wakira and Googie is right there. So too, Chip Church here. And Cynthia Lima. Shazir and Kip Koech have both been dropped. Any of these five more than capable of winning. They have increased the pace. They are on course for around about 68, maybe just under. Netsanet Gudeta in that group. World cross-country bronze medalist. The other Ethiopian, Yalu. World junior silver medalist in cross-country a few years ago. Right, now the significant thing here. Now we can't see it from this angle. But Great Britain's Mo Farah is back off the pace. Now, he still looks comfortable. It could be that he's quite happy to run at his own pace. So there's Farah. That gives you the indication. There may not be a problem for Farah. He might just be running sensibly. He still looks as though he's running fairly comfortably. But you would have thought that he, under ideal circumstances and feeling 100%, you would have thought that he would be staying locked beside or very close to the likes of Kamwaro and Kuroki. So we will watch to see whether Mo Farah maintains this current position. You can just see him there, where the clock is, Farah now obscured behind the clock. He's just above where the clock is. So as far as the British fans are concerned there isn't any need to panic just yet he is a world-class half marathon runner Mo Farah and he is still in touch with that lead group but he's at the back we should just clarify his uh, last two half marathons have been brilliant performances by the way 59 32 in Lisbon 59 22 winning the great north run so he is more than capable over the half marathon and it could simply be that he's decided there's a few seconds too fast at the front and he may well just be running his own race because he is still in that group. But, but we will watch to see whether that gap grows to the Olympic champion. Fascinating development there. He still looks OK. 5.38. He's the Olympic champion, of course, over 5 and 10,000 metres. He's a five-time world champion over the 5 and 10. So... We shall watch and wait to see 
what that gap is back to Mo Farah. Fascinating race unfolding, and so too for the women. 55 minutes on the clock. They're running towards the bottom end of Rove Park. You can see the lake just in the back of shot. So, Kudetta and Yalu, two great, very strong cross-country runners. Mary Wakira and Gugi, one of the fastest times in the world this year. She's on the left of frame there. Great run in Houston. Cynthia Limo, who's obscured. There she is running at the back of that group. The third fastest athlete in history, officially. She's 159. And 156 is Peris Chep Church here. Really good 10K runner, Chep Church here. She's paced the London Marathon as well. Well, the weather may be uh, just deciding to uh, not play ball 100%, but look at the crowd. This is brilliant. Well, the women are going at such a pace. The uh, lead motorbikes need to just speed up a fraction there. So, really well supported race. Farah is still at the back of that group. There he is. He's got that distinctive white vest. Jeffrey Kamwaraw is in second place. It looks to me like it's a Googie Absalom still in that group. No sign of any scrapes on the knees of Kamwaraw. He looks OK at the moment. There's Machiri leading. So the two men who were first and second in the World Cross Country Championships, Kamwaraw beating Machiri in a brilliant sprint finish. They're one and two here. That was a great finish to that cross-country race. They were tearing chunks out of one another over the last 800 metres. Heading out over the barrage, that lovely long loping stride, carrying Mo Farah along here. The Olympic champion was just on the left of frame there. He is still in touch with that lead group, so there may well not be a problem. He might just be quite happy to run on his own. Great drama. So the Cardiff barrage. 1.1 kilometres linking the marina to the bay. And there's Farah on the right of Frey. And they're looking at their watch. There's a few words being exchanged between the Kenyans at the front there. And they will certainly be aware of what's going on with Farah. It was Muchiri on the left there who was looking at his watch and uh, just exchanged a glance or two. There he goes again. They've definitely had a conversation about this race and about their tactics. Sometimes, of course, what happens is they decide what the pace is going to be and then they'll say, OK, when we get to kilometre X, it's every man for himself. So. Fascinating, fascinating stage of the race. And the key ingredient in that drama is whether Mo Farah stays on terms with this group. The elite women have almost one hour on the clock and certainly their pace at the last indication would indicate it's a roundabout or just inside 68 minute spot. This is a, a very, very high quality encounter this. So, Limo still in touch in that group. Mary Wakira, silver medalist two years ago, wearing 160. And those two great cross-country runners, Gudetta, 129, and Yalu, 130 and 156. That's Peris Chep Church here. She just looked behind and apologised to Gudetta. I think Gudetta may have just taken the heels of the Kenyan there. Talking about Peris Chep Church here, who's running on the right of frame there. And Gudetta maybe just getting a little bit tired and clipping the Kenyan's heels. So, who is going to make the first move and when will it come? This is why distance races are so, so fascinating. As far as the team competition is concerned, it is the Kenyans who are once again in the driving seat here. 
They've won so many of the team titles in this competition. Nine in total. This would be number ten. Wow. So, Perez Church here just deciding to put a little bit of an injection into this pace. And Yalu has become detached. Now it's only a couple of metres. It's ever so slightly downhill. Chep Church here looked over her shoulder. And that's a definite gap back to Genet Yalu. She's the national record holder, the Ethiopian, over the half marathon. She was third in Ras Al Khaimah with 66.29. But she did not like that injection of pace from Perez Chep Church here. Wow. So. It's three Kenyans and one Ethiopian at the front of the elite women's race. This is the elite men, and it's Jeffrey Camelraw leading. This is really bold. Camelraw has hit the front. He has two compatriots behind him. Then come, I think, three Ethiopians. And I think this has been a team tactic. They're now side by side, these guys. And Farah has definitely been dropped by the leaders. When they were all running together, it could have been that the Olympic champion just fancied running on his own. There's Farah. So, here's the lead quartet. Muchiri, Kamwaraw and Cheprot. All running together. Mo Farah in eighth place. This is really fascinating running. Come on, Six miles in around about 27 minutes. This is 59 minute pace. This is fast. This is really, really fast. Well, I think this pace is so fast that any of the lead 10 cannot be discounted because the question is, can the likes of Machiri and Camelraw and Chepard keep this pace going? This is really, really quick. Wowee, what a race this is turning out to be. So, Gudetta has been dropped. It's Chep Church here and Limo. And Googi in third place there, got the silver medal two years ago as she settled for bronze. The team title is all but assured here, assuming the three Kenyans all finish in first, second and third. You can't do better than that in a best of three. The Chep Church here and Cynthia Limo. Chep Church here finished around about half a minute behind Cynthia Limo when they both scorched to those lifetime bests in Ras Al Khaimah. Chep Church here ran 66.39, but Limo was 66.04, and she's improved so much, the athlete on the right of picture. She was second behind Mary and Googie in Houston in January, and then knocked almost a minute off her lifetime best. This is excellent running by the two leading Kenyans. And Wachira has definitely been dropped in third. There she is. That's the gap from third to second and first. And maybe, maybe she'll start to become a target for the Ethiopian in fourth place, who I think is Getsanet. Good data. 104 at 20k. This is really good running. Really, really good running. They're both capable of these kind of times. This is a world-class race from these two women, and they're bidding to add their name to a rich, rich list of Kenyan and Kenyan-born champions. Tegla Larupe has taken this title three times. So too Lorna Kiplingap. Wonderful careers have been kick-started and reputations enhanced by taking the World Half Marathon title side by side nothing to separate them at this stage it's quick it's been brave it's been a great run Wakira is in third place there she is you can just see her towards the bottom of the picture the question is can she hang on for third place 
We've got Ethiopians in fourth and fifth of the team title and the podium clean sweep look as though they're belonging to the Kenyans but which of the two will be victorious Jeff Church here a pacemaker for the London Marathon the second fastest athlete in the world last year with a fabulous run on over 10k inside 31 minutes Limo has made a massive step up in class here and Limo has just got a meter or two and this is what she did in Ras Al Khaimah when she had Gladys Chirono just behind her. This is her break. This is her bid. Cynthia Limo does not like leaving it to the last 50 metres. This is her bid for World Championship glory here on the streets of Cardiff. This is a great run from Cynthia Limo and so too Perez Chep Church here. Wakira and Gugi will have to try and hang on for third place. But look at this. Chep Church here has not been dropped. Limo has made her bid for glory. But it hasn't been enough. And does this now play into the hands of Perez Chep Church here. Limo doesn't like a sprint over the last 50 metres. She made her move. But Perez Chep Church here. One of the fastest athletes in the world this year and last, over 10 kilometres, over the shorter distance, is hanging on. This is what major championship racing is all about. Gudetta's in fourth place. She's trying to close in on a very tired and Googie who's in third. But it's Limo or Chep Church here. And I think Chep Church is broken Limo. If Limo is going to respond, she's got to do it now. And she can't. Perez Chep Church here is going to come home here with the most important victory of her career. Cynthia Limo, the faster of the two athletes, made her break with 400 to go. But what a response from Perez Chep Church here. One of the fastest athletes in the world over 10k. And now she has a global title to her name. Perez Chep Church here takes the gold. Cynthia Limo the silver. And Chep Church here can't believe that she's beaten her faster compatriot over the half marathon. And Googie is absolutely exhausted. But she will complete the clean sweep for the Kenyans. They've done it again. Mary Wakira and Googie, silver two years ago, it's bronze this time. And the Kenyans with Gudetta coming home in fourth. The Kenyans have dominated once again. Individual one, two, three, and with it comes the team gold as well. Really good time there from Chep Church here, especially bearing in mind these conditions. It hasn't rained as many were predicting, but it has been blustery. Brilliant performance from the at the front the first three coming home inside 68 minutes that was genuinely world world class wow so that was the women's race one two three for the Kenyans and the team title Kamwaro and Muchiri they were first and second in the World Cross Country Championships. That's the gap back to Mo Farah. We do need to remind ourselves here, the leaders are running very, very fast. Farah's body language and his gait still looks good. He clearly has been dropped by the lead group. But he's running okay here. And the question is, there are the leaders. That's the view from Mo Farah's perspective. Yes, he has a gap to make up here, but he has not been completely and utterly dropped. And the question's going to come, can the likes of Jeffrey Camerall sustain this pace? Because at our last time checkpoint, it was lightning, lightning quick. This is a great race and a great pace. Jeffrey Camerall is aiming to become the first man to defend this title since the legendary Zerzanay Tedesse. I think back in 2009, Tedesse won so many editions of the race, but not all of them back to back. Turgat's a multiple champion, the five time World Cross Country champion. He won this race twice, and Kamwaro wants to make sure his name 
is written into the history books not once but twice. Farah's in the distance, you can still see him. But the leading five are Kenyan and Ethiopian. And this pace is really, really hot. Well, Jeffrey Camelraw, and a few people thought it was just kidology, Jeffrey Camelraw was talking realistically in his mind about a crack at Zerzanate Dessay's eye-watering 58-23 world record. Well, it's not 58-23 pace at the moment, but it is quick and it is a roundabout 59-minute pace. There's eight miles, 35-58. This is quick. This is very, very quick. They are running sub 59 minute pace at the moment. This is great, great running. The fastest time in the world this year, Solomon Yego, 58.44. That was in Ostia a couple of Sundays ago. So this isn't a bad run from Mo Farah. We should put this into perspective. Because the leading five, or the leading three especially, are running so fast, Farah is still running fairly close to lifetime best territory. This is a sub 60 minute pace from Mo Farah at the moment. So it's not as if he's completely crumbled here, but the pace of the lead three is really, really, really fast. Especially bearing in mind, we're not talking about ideal conditions here. That's why we've only got three left in contention. So, what a run, and what a pace. Machiri and Camaro. well, they're in the process of doing what they did at the World Cross. Last year, they had Mukhtar Idris of Ethiopia joining them with a big carve-up at the front. This time, it's Toller for company, but the names and the identity and the talent of the two Kenyans remains unchanged from the latter half of the World Cross Country Championships 12 months ago. This is great racing. Kalmaror is running very close to lifetime best pace. 58.54, Kalmaror's lifetime best, and I think he's running there or thereabouts. Eden Karoki Machiri, he's running well inside his lifetime best, and so too is Tamarat Toller. Toller hasn't broken 60 minutes yet, and here he is with a crack at 59 minutes. What a fascinating race. And bearing in mind, if you are just joining us, Jeffrey Kamwaror fell on the start line and lost valuable seconds with at least 50 athletes coming through, passing him on the outside and inside. Wow, this is so impressive from the leaders. We've got this wonderful subplot about whether Great Britain's reigning Olympic champion over five and 10,000 metres, Mo Farah, can close the gap to the leaders. But I think the question here is one of sustaining the pace. If Jeffrey Camaror manages to keep going here, it will be a phenomenal performance. That's the group leading at the moment. That's the one, two, three. That's Fifth place there, running well. Fourth up ahead, then the leading three. So, this is good running from the Ethiopians. As far as the team competition is concerned, this is getting interesting. Five, five, eight. Good run there. But he's just trying to hang on a little bit at the moment. 59.20, Cheprot's lifetime best. So he's also running around about PB territory. Approaching 15 kilometres here. Cheprot still just behind the leading trio. There you can see him in the, four, in the distance. And it's still Muchiri and Camerol and Tamirat Tola, first, second, and third. Can they keep it going though? That's the question.
Mo Farah is just coming up to the nine mile point as well. So, Machiri and Kamwaraw. Brilliant athletes. Machiri just finished off the podium last year in Beijing. It was a wonderful race as they tried to run the sting out of Mo Farah's finish. They couldn't do so. Machiri faded a little bit to fifth. Whereas Kamwaraw tried gamely to hang on, but he ended up with the silver medal. He's a really confident guy, Jeffrey Kamwaraw. He said he's not intimidated by Mo Farah. And he's certainly proving that here with this performance. Toller has been dropped here. He's in third place. This is a brilliant, brilliant run here from the two Kenyans. They are side by side. They're looking round. They realise that Toller has been dropped. There's the view. Kamwaraw has just picked up and dumped a uh, water bottle. Now he goes in for another one. And I wonder if they'll share it. They usually do. No. 41-41. 13-41 for the last five kilometres. That is outstanding distance running. And this is inside 59-minute pace. That is why there are only two still in the mix for the gold medal. This is genuinely world-class. What a race. Farah in sixth place, 22 seconds. He's still running inside lifetime best territory. Thirteen forty-one. that's outrageous. That's Zerzane Tedesse-esque. He's arguably in history the greatest half-marathon runner of all time. Five world titles, a silver as well. Wowee. So, Farah is in sixth place at the moment. So, he's working, but remember, he's still operating at a roundabout personal best territory here. This is not an atrocious run from Farah. He's simply being outgunned by Kamaraw and Muchiri, who are producing one of the best races of their lives. Farah is still on course to smash 60 minutes here, but he's clearly working and he's clearly struggling. Farah is in sixth place at the moment. 22 seconds off the pace. These are the leaders. Bidan Karoki. He's wearing the blue trainers. Jeffrey Kamaraw is the defending champion. He's the reigning world cross country champion. And Karoki just looks over his shoulder. They've got the gap. It's Tamirat Tola in third place. I wonder whether the Ethiopian, who is now running on his own, is going to run out of gas towards the end. Because whilst Kamwaraw and Kuroki Muchiri have lived at this pace before, Toller in third place is running way, way inside his lifetime best and he's going backwards. A little bit of a stumble there from Jeffrey Kamwaraw as they went round that corner. This is a brilliant, brilliant run from both of them. If they keep running at this pace, they've got about 15 minutes to go. Farah receiving a lot of applause. He's really hurting. Ayelu is running just in front of Farah, so that will give the Britons something to chase. But I'm not sure that Tamirat Toller is still in third place. I think Simon Cheprot may well have gone in front of him. I think the battle for third may change quite a few times between here and the finish line. 10 miles inside 45 minutes. They're still on course to break 59 minutes. This is brilliant, brilliant running from all of them. Kamwaraw is really taking it to the rest of the field here. And it's only Kuroki who's currently living with this pace. This is a 
a run of the very highest quality. Forty-one, forty-one at 15k. They could secure a course record here. This is really, really fast. The course record is 58.59 from Zerzane to Desse. All of these athletes still running well. Callum Hawkins is having a good run. The uh, Britain, nowhere near the front, but you can understand that with this kind of pace. So, Machiri still keeps looking over his shoulder. As any amateur coach would tell you, he's losing vital momentum there every time he looks behind him. He should be concentrating on this great, great race between himself and Camaraw. That's how the team competition looks at the moment. Great to see uh, Great Britain there in uh, fourth place. Home inspiration, some way short of the Eritreans. There'd have to be a switch around of about a minute and a half. Just to remind you, as far as the team competition is concerned, it's the top three and their times are added together fairly straightforward. Wow. This is so, so quick. Roth Park Lake. 30 acres, this lake. Fairly blowy, but we still haven't had the torrential downpour that we were expecting. which is good news as far as the times and the performances are concerned. Well, Camaral was talking, as I said earlier, about a world record. Well, this isn't world record pace, but this is absolutely superb running, especially in these fairly blustery conditions. Only once has this half marathon title been won with a time inside 59 minutes. Zerzane Tedesse with 58.59. I think this could be a championship record. The question is, can they keep it going? Tamarat Tolo was in third place at our last checkpoint, but I suspect he may have been caught by Cheprop because the Kenyan was looking good. So a Kenyan 1-2-3 in the men's race could it be a Kenyan 1-2-3 in the women's race? Here's Farah. He's got Ayelu and Toller for company. Toller's going backwards. Uh, just to remind you, no Britain has won a medal here in this championship since Carl Thackeray got a bronze in 1993. These three men are still running well inside 60-minute pace. That is why Farah looks as though he's working because he is this is good running by the two ethiopians and the british olympic champion over 10,000 meters can great britain's mo farah find something to try and close the gap on simon cheprot in third that's Simon Cheprot, you can tell that because he's wearing the blue trainers. So, Cheprot's in third, and look how many people are crowding round the course. Cheprot's in third. 11 miles, 49.20, still on course for a championship record. So, Jeffrey Camerall is running on the left of picture there. He's got the white trainers. He's got Bidan Kuroki Machiri running to his right-hand side. They were first and second in the World Cross Country Championships and they produced an absolutely scintillating last kilometre in China, in Guiang, on this very weekend, 12 months ago, and they're producing some magic here once again. They have surely given themselves the platform here for a golden finish once again. But will that finish reverse from the World Cross? Can Bidan Kuroki finish on top 
and deny Jeffrey Camelraw his second title in the World Half Marathon Championships. There's a real battle royal going on for third spot. We have Simon Cheprot in third, but Mo Farah and Ayelu and Toller were right there in the mix. I suspect that Toller may be struggling out of the trio because he was up in third place at one stage. And that's really difficult to hold on to your momentum. And they're talking to each other. This is quick enough to be a course record and there is still dialogue between the two men in first and second. Extraordinary. Well, the weather is beginning to close in and this just underlines once again the quality of what we're witnessing from the defending champion and the man who finished just behind him in the World Cross and just behind him on the track last year in Beijing. So, I know the identity of the athletes in first and second at the moment. Just watching back down the field, Cheprot, I think, is still in third place, but Farah is working with Tola and Aleu to try and close the gap on the Kenyan. There is Cheprot. I think he's looking laboured. I mean, it wouldn't be a surprise if he's struggling. He's got a cracking PB of 59.20, but he's running there or thereabouts. And is that a little telltale look over his shoulder? It could be. So, there's the Scott Memorial, just in the park there. The left of frame, lighthouse built in 1915 to commemorate Captain Scott's ill-fated Antarctic journey in 1910. Great history here in Cardiff. And there's great history being made on the streets of the city as far as distance running is concerned. There's all sorts going on here. We have Jeffrey Kamwaraw and Bidan Kuroki Machiri going for gold and going for a course record and a championship record. We have Simon Cheprot out of shot at the moment. Machiri is still looking over his shoulder. So, gold and silver will surely go to one of the two Kenyans barring an attack of cramp. We have a subplot going on here. And Cheprot has been caught. This is fascinating. Simon Cheprot was alone in third place, but he's clearly hurting. We have Aleu of Ethiopia, Tola of Ethiopia, and Great Britain's Olympic champion over 10,000 metres, Mo Farah. Farah's got a shout of a bronze medal here, and it would be the, only the second individual medal by a British man and the first for 23 years if he was able to come home ahead of the Kenyan and the two Ethiopians. That is very definitely a battle for bronze. This is about gold and it's about two hugely talented, determined, brave teammates. The World Cross Country Championship final last year was something special. This, I think, is even better bearing in mind how quickly they're running and the conditions under which they're producing this performance. There are four men in the mix for the bronze, this is it. You could certainly argue that Cheprot might be feeling the weaker of this four because psychologically he's been caught. So four men driving home for one mile. Four men driving with just over a mile to go. Biggest hill on the course here. Machiri and Kamaror. I wonder whether Machiri has been looking the more positive. It's driving wind and rain. That was Jos Hermans, the legendary manager and coach there. And look at the rain. It's starting to come. And Jeffrey Kamaror, the man who fell at the start, is making his move for glory here and so far beaten Karoki cannot respond but Karoki Machiri has not been completely dropped here wherever you're watching this in the world this is a very very special performance from Jeffrey Camelraw he's the defending champion he fell five meters into the race 
and in driving wind and rain, he is on course to produce one of the quickest times the half marathon championship has ever seen. Beden Kuroki, I think, is settling for silver. And this is the battle for third. Tamirat Tola of Ethiopia. Abiyane Aleu is also there. So too Cheprot. And Farah is hanging on. One Kenyan, two Ethiopians and a British athlete. Is it going to be a Kenyan clean sweep? Or can either of the Ethiopians or the Briton get an individual medal? Camerol looks so, so strong. He's a big, powerful athlete. He's not as lean as some of the other Kenyans you see. He looks more like an 800 meter runner or 1500 meter runner. And look at the wind and the rain. 14.25, it has been uphill. 56.06 at 20K. He is still on course to break 59 minutes. Can he finish this off in atrocious conditions? Eden Kuroki, Buchiri, has already given way by eight seconds. And I wonder whether the wheels are going to come off for the man in second place to such an extent that he might get sucked into a battle for bronze if the two Ethiopians and Mo Farah can get up towards the man in second place. This is a sensational performance from Jeffrey Kamwaraw. Only two men have produced multiple world half marathon titles. Zerzane Tedesse and Paul Turgat and Jeffrey Kamwaraw is about to do the same. He's underlining his status as one of the very best athletes in history. His numbers almost being ripped off, such as the ferocity of the wind driving into his face. But look at the cadence, look at the body language. He's driving his way towards the finish line. This is the battle for bronze. This is going to be fascinating. Cheprot's out of it, I think. So it's going to come down to Abiyanai Yaleu, Tamirat Tola or Mo Farah for the bronze. He is still there, Cheprot, but he looks like he's hurting. This is about one man and his bid for glory once again. He was sensational when he won two years ago in Copenhagen. He was brilliant when he won the world title in cross-country last year in China. And here he is about to take a second global crown over the half marathon. This has been arguably the best performance of his career. He's done it the hard way. He has been determined that glory would once again be his on the streets of Cardiff. And all that after falling in the first five metres of the race. Beden Kuroki Machiri will have to settle for silver once again as long as he can keep this cape going. He's got a big enough gap ahead of the battle for third. Jeffrey Kamaror is being roared on all the way. He's lost a few seconds. It's still going to be a brilliant time. Can he come home inside 59 minutes? We are watching the performance of one of the greats. This is right up there in terms of speed, in terms of talent, and in terms of performance. It's just outside 59 minutes, but this has been a moment that Jeffrey Camelroy will remember forever. He has retained the World Half Marathon title, and in some, some style, that was a very, very special performance indeed. Beden Kuroki Machiri, is coming home for the silver medal just as he did in the world cross country championships last year it's a kenyan one two but who is going to get the bronze a layu of ethiopia was there so too toller and look at mo farah a layu's hanging on great britain's mo farah driving for the line the olympic champion he wants an individual medal here he might well just hang on Mo Farah gets the bronze, what a run! Just a couple of seconds inside the hour, and that took real, real character from the Olympic 10,000 metre champion.
What a trio of podium performances. That was one of the best finishes we've ever seen in the 22-year history of the World Half Marathon Championships. What a race. 59-10, a season's best, and course record for Camora, and even if it is perfect sunshine in future years on this course... Mo Farah had to find something very special there to get on the podium. Nobody, not even Bidan, Kuroki Machiri, nobody could live with the talent and the relentless pace of Jeffrey Camora. A brilliant time in brutal conditions. He's only the third man in history to be a multiple world half marathon champion. He is very, very, very special. And I wonder what confidence he'll take from this going towards the 10,000 meters in Rio for the Olympic Games. Kuroki Machiri takes another global medal, a silver behind Camaro in the World Cross last year, and a silver once again. He did all he could to live with his compatriot, but he just ran out of steam in the last half a mile. And what a sprint for the line. A Leu of Ethiopia just losing out to Mo Farah. You can just see him there. He's already being interviewed. A huge star in Great Britain. He has come home with the bronze medal to replicate the performance of Carl Thackeray, the British man who got the bronze back in 1993. Wow. What a day and what a race. Just superb. While well, there are the grazes that prove Camaro fell in the first five metres, we couldn't see any bleeding on his knees. Very difficult to get that shot when they're at full stretch. But doesn't that underline even further just what a special performance this was from Jeffrey Camaro? Absolutely incredible to get up off the floor after five metres and win with one of the fastest performances we've seen in the history of this championship. That was unbelievable. Paris Church here. She withstood the drive for the line from Cynthia Lebo. Gold and silver for them. Mary Wachira and Gugi completing the 1 2 3 for Kenya and obviously the team title. And all three of them inside 68 minutes. World class running from those women. Eloise Wellings just outside the top 10. Good performance from Janet Chirobon Balcom, expatriated Kenyan. Sarah Hall also inside the top 20. Alison Dixon inside the top 30. 72-57, PBs and season's bests all the way down that list. Well, the team title, there's absolutely no doubt it went the way of the Kenyans. Great performances. Ethiopia took the silver, but look how close it was between Japan and Australia for third. Just a matter of what, some 18 seconds. Absolutely incredible. 23 seconds, I beg your pardon. Japan, for the ninth consecutive edition of the World Half Marathon Championships, have taken the team bronze. Great Britain, 11th overall. 15 teams in total. We really have been treated to, to one of the most intriguing editions of the World Half Marathon Championships we've ever seen. Well, 16,000 athletes are running in the footsteps of champions. And I wonder when they eventually get to the finish and they go home and watch the highlights of this race. I wonder if they'll be able to believe the speed and the ferocity of those we've just been privileged enough to witness storming to the men's and women's titles. We have witnessed a very, very, very special race. Jeffrey Camaro becomes only the third man in history to defend the World Half Marathon title 
Hiroki Machiri, the silver once again, just as he did behind his compatriot at the World Cross. And Mo Farah, only the second Briton to be on the podium individually, replicating the achievements of Carl Thackeray with a sprint for the line. Just one second inside 60 minutes. Stephen Makoka completes the top 10 with a season's bests. Good run from Paul Pollock, running inside 63 minutes. And Goosey Amsalon will be disappointed with that run in 13th, just drifting towards the 62-minute line. And none of them could live with the pace of Bidan Kuroki and Jeffrey Camerault. Dewey Griffiths coming home inside the top 30. Leading Welshman, personal best, well inside 65 minutes. And the drama at the front of that race was absolutely sensational. Wow. Plenty of wind and rain here, but it didn't stop a great performance from all of the leading teams. Can you take it? Combined time of inside three hours. Ethiopia Silver, Eritrea, who took the gold in uh, Copenhagen two years ago, they get the bronze. Great Britain and Northern Ireland just edged out of the bronze, partly, of course, because Mo Farah ran inside the hour for that bronze medal individually. What a race. So, a little bit more time for the masses to enjoy the scenery, the atmosphere and the surroundings. It's not absolutely smashing with rain, although it did come down pretty hard for the last mile and a half or so of the elite men's race. And just going past the Millennium Centre there. Tribute to Roll Dahl. The uh, Millennium Centre home to the Welsh Performing Arts. That's the Norwegian church where the legendary children's author Roll Dahl was christened. Long way to go for many of the club runners and fun runners. Tens of thousands of pounds, or hundreds of thousands of pounds being raised for local causes. This is about six miles. One guy there just stopping to redo the shoelaces. He's just making sure. He's either wearing a kilt or he's got a rain jacket. It is a kilt. Well, I hope he's got, I hope he's got something warm on, warm on under that. It's rather bracing here. What a race. The Cardiff Half Marathon has delivered in fine, fine style. It's a well-established race in, in its own right, but great to have it attached to the World Half Marathon Championships, just as Copenhagen did two years ago, at the end of March in 2014. Really good club runners still grinding their way towards the finish. We've got the back end of the elite field as well. There's an Exmouth Harrier coming towards the line. Le Lire, the Frenchman. So, the elite men still coming home. Still inside 70 minutes here, and the conditions have been absolutely brutal. The Lira's best is just inside 65 minutes. The Ukrainian Lashin comes home. He's about five or six minutes outside his lifetime best. This is great running. You'll get the tail end of the elite field and you'll get the best of the club runners coming home. Well, I've been privileged enough to cover the World Half Marathon Championships since 2010. And that's the best pair of races I've ever witnessed. Absolutely brilliant. Great drama. And for Camerall to get up off his knees and win that race and get close to a championship record in driving wind and rain is just fantastic. <laughs> of his three global crowns, it's arguably his most impressive. 
So, there's the IAAF president, Sebastian Coe. It's been a good 10 days for the president. Great edition of the World Indoor Championships in Portland on the west coast of the States last weekend. And Cardiff has laid on a wonderful spectacle here, despite the rain. They've covered up the crowd and they've come out to support their race in their city in great, great numbers. So 16,000. Taking a little while longer than 59 minutes and 10 seconds that Jeffrey Camerall took to uh, storm to his title. So we come to the presentation for the elite women's race. A one, two, three for Kenya. You can tell it is getting uh, a little bit blustery. So, the presentation, just waiting to start. They've got some flowers and they'll receive their medals shortly. A great race from the three of the Kenyans. Bronze medalists in a time of 67.54. So the bronze medalist, Mary Wakira and Gugi. She was on the podium two years ago with a silver. This time the bronze, a really, really classy competitor. Inside 68 minutes for Ngugi. The silver for Cynthia Limo, just on the right of frame there. Limo, the fastest woman in the world this year. Another great time from her, 67 minutes 34. Great performance and the champion. Perez Church here. She was fourth behind Limo in the Rack Half Marathon, but this time it was Chep Church's turn to shine. And as she shivers, she can certainly celebrate a job well done. The best and biggest performance of her career. She's the World Half Marathon champion. Fantastic champion as ever. And it's great to see so a one, two, three for the Kenyan women, which obviously means they've taken the team title as well. That, by the way, for the tenth time, which means they've taken four of the last five. Period of absolute dominance from the Kenyans. Really nice setting here for the finish of the race, the Civic Centre, some wonderful city buildings. One of the fastest growing and fastest expanding cities in the whole of Europe. Back at the six mile point, plenty of smiles, one or two wearing full track suits. The teenage Ninja Turtles are out in force. I can see all four of them. Just taking their time. It's being run in a great spirit this race. The wind and the rain haven't put off the participants or the crowds. It is getting a little bit cold now. We're midway through the afternoon at 16,000. Have indeed, and are indeed, running in the footsteps of champions. A couple of fancy dress costumes. That's good work in this weather. Still excellent running by these guys. I'm looking here at the commentary position and it's uh, I'm just inside 74 minutes on the clock. This is still sub six minute mile pace, which is excellent, excellent running in these brutal conditions. There's one of the uh, presumably local athletes. He's not wearing a club vest, but he's still running really, really well here. He's gonna smash the 75 minute barrier, which is a brilliant run for a club runner, absolutely superb. The Welsh flags will be waving for hours to come as they celebrate. A job well done. The president looking back down the field. He too still impressed by the quality of the finishers. Still inside, 75 minutes on the clock. Great running by the club runners coming across the line now. Well, what a treat this has been. Two really, really good races. 
the uh, crowds towards the six mile point just thinning out a little bit you'd expect that there's baby big ben in the background that's what they call it great piece of welsh architecture and welsh history City Hall looking magnificent on a blustery afternoon and I think everybody connected with this race and everyone connected with this city will be delighted as to how well the two races have turned out. A little bit of rain but absolutely nothing to dampen the spirit and also more importantly nothing to dampen the quality of what's been on offer and maybe one or two athletes from the future have been inspired for bigger and better things. Now the reason they're focusing on Superman is because he's trying to set a record for the fastest Superman ever to finish. And I think he might just have done it. I think he needed under 117. And you can see there that he's clearly done it. So even Superman running well here in Cardiff. Tough day for those running a bit further back down the course. So, it's me. It's me. hopefully, they will come back again and compete next year. Not quite as fast as the time posted by the leading three in the elite men's race, but this Cardiff Half Marathon is now really, really well established. And if you've been inspired by what you've seen here today, then come and join this festival of distance running here in the Welsh capital next year. Still some great runners coming in. Well, we will have a presentation at some stage soon for the man who has defended his world half marathon title, Jeffrey Kipsang Kamwaraw, beating his compatriot, Bidan Karoki Majiri, one and two again, just as they were in China, in Guiyang, for the World Cross 12 months ago. Kanwaraw is the man who conquered all before him, despite falling at the start line. It's a little bit gloomy, of course, from the aerial shots, but that's to be expected. Right there, next to the IAAF president. I don't know if we're ready yet, but... Looks like the helicopter's dealt extremely well in these very... Well, he's being made to wait for his gold medal, but he won't mind one bit. Jeffrey Kipsang Kamwaraw has taken the title in style. Beden Kuroki Machiri in second. So Kamwaraw has done it again. And I do think... It is going to be the most cherished of his three global titles so far. The world cross-country champion is now the double world half marathon champion. There he is. Bidan Karoki Machiri in second place. And Mo Farah, all credit to the Briton. He had to dig in so, so hard to complete the podium and deny Abney Aleu the bronze medal. The athletes just stay warm ahead of the official medal presentation. So gold and silver to Kamwaraw and Machiri and bronze to Great Britain's Mo Farah. All the smiles and all the glory belong to the East African nation. As the rest of the athletes pour in towards the finish line. That is a race that will go down in World Championship history as one of the best. Paris Church here with the victory in the women's race. Camaral has done it again in style. Despite the rain, that was sheer class. Thanks for your company.